Okay, this problem involves Newton's law of gravitation. Um, so up here in the right-hand corner I have uh, Newton's law of gravitation, which is simply an equation for finding the force between uh, two objects. Because what Newton's law of gravitation tells us is that all objects in the universe are attracted to each other. Um, big G here is the gravitational constant, which you don't need to memorize. It's uh, 6.673 times 10 to the negative 11. And then uh, multiply by m1, m2, divided by r squared. So it's like here we have m1, here we have m2. They're separated by a distance r, <clears throat> and r is always from center to center. And what we know is that these two masses will attract each other. So the way you label these forces, uh, F12 and F21. So F12 just means the force on 1 by 2, and F21 is the force on 2 by 1. And even though M1, so I drew M1 a little bit bigger than M2, even though these masses are not the same, uh, the forces are the same. These two forces are equal and opposite, which is Newton's third law. Every force has an equal and opposite force. Okay, so um, this problem involving Jupiter, um, we're going to be using the two applications of this law of gravitation. Uh, so the first application gives us this equation, which I'm going to show you where it comes from, because I don't recommend memorizing this. You can figure out where it comes from. And then the second application is this equation, which has to do with uh, you know planetary motion. Uh, v represents the velocity of a satellite orbiting um, another planetary object, you know, like so a satellite around Jupiter. Okay, so the, the first two questions here, question one and question two, are going to pertain to this first uh, application of the law of gravitation. And then the second two questions, three and four, pertain to this uh, application for Newton's law of gravitation. All right, so let's start with the first two. So here we have Jupiter. And the way to figure out this first equation, so this first equation deals with the acceleration of gravity anywhere in the universe. You know, it could be on Jupiter, it could be on Mars, it could be on the Earth. Um, so let's say that Jupiter is M1, and we have the mass of Jupiter, it's up here. And we also have the radius of Jupiter, which, by the way, we're going to need to convert this radius into meters. Uh, there's a thousand meters in a kilometer. Um, but the way to figure this out is you put a random object. So we're figuring out the acceleration of gravity. What is gravity on the surface of Jupiter? So let's put a random object here, call it M2. And we know that all objects in the universe attract each other. That's the whole idea with Newton's law of gravitation. So M2 is attracted to Jupiter. You know, so we would label that F2, 1, the force on 2 by 1. And then Jupiter is attracted to M2. It's a mutual attraction. This is F1, 2. Uh, and then the distance from center to center, from the center of M2, to the center of Jupiter, which is M1, is just the radius, right? So, for, you know, from here all the way up to there, it's, it's the radius. So they're, they're separated by the radius of Jupiter from center to center. All right, so looking at, we're going to focus our attention on M2, uh, the, the gravitational force acting on M2, uh, there's two equations for it. The first equation we learned is simply mg, where that would be m2g, the mass of m2 multiplied by the gravity, the acceleration of gravity on Jupiter, which is what we're looking for. So that's one equation for the force of gravity. And then the second equation comes from Newton's law of gravitation, gm1 m2 over r squared. So the, these two equations are equivalent. We basically have two equations for the force of gravity. And then what happens is our random object, M2, M2 cancels out. And we're left with G equals big G M1 over R squared. So the gravitational constant is 6.673.
times 10 to the negative 11 newton meter squared over kilogram squared and then the mass of Jupiter right up here this is m1 1.97 times 10 to the 27th kilograms divided by so we got to put this uh, this radius into meters so that's going to be um, so let's see it's 7.15 times 10 to the seventh so uh, multiply this by a thousand and you get 7.15 times 10 to the seventh meters so punching that into your calculator gives an acceleration of gravity we'll just round this to the tenths place uh, 25.7 We'll go, we'll go to 100, 71 meter per second squared. So that's the answer to number one. Now the second question, we're using the exact same equation, but we're now going to be looking at a point that is above the, the uh, surface of Jupiter. We're going to be going to a point up here, finding out what gravity is there. So all we have to do here, so using this same equation, so, so this was number one, so now we're doing number two. So G gravity equals the gravitational constant mass of Jupiter over R squared. So the numerator is the same. We haven't changed the mass of Jupiter or the gravitational constant. But what we have changed is the distance from center to center. So now we're going to be using this distance. The distance from the point we're focusing on all the way to the center. So basically what we have to do is take the radius of Jupiter, we're going to take the radius of Jupiter, which is that distance, and then add the height above Jupiter. So we're going to be taking uh, 30,000 kilometers and adding it to 71,500 kilometers. So this is 6.673 times 10 to the negative 11. Uh, Newton meter squared over kilogram squared. The mass of Jupiter is still 1.97 times 10 to the 27th. And then our total distance is 1.015 times 10 to the 8th. When you add the height above Jupiter, when you add the, uh, the 30,000 kilometers to the 71,000 kilometers, and make sure you square this, it's over R squared. So then this gives an answer of 12.76 meter per second squared. So that's the acceleration of gravity, 30,000 kilometers above the surface of Jupiter. All right, now the third question, we're changing gears here. So now we're focusing on um, a moon, one of Jupiter's moons orbiting Jupiter. Let's make some room. Clean this up. Okay, so let's put Jupiter back. So here is, we'll make Jupiter smaller. And then we'll put a moon around Jupiter. So here is a moon traveling around Jupiter. So let's see if I can draw a nice circle. This is supposed to, <laughs> oh man, that's supposed to be a nice perfect circle, but whatever. Okay, so the idea here, pretending that that circle I drew was a nice circle, the idea here is that um, all objects, again, Newton's law of gravitation tells us that all objects in the universe attract each other. So here we have Jupiter. Let's call Jupiter M1. And then here is Jupiter's moon, Io, which we're going to call M2. So we have M1 and M2. Um, all objects in the universe attract each other. So M2 is attracted to Jupiter. So that would be called F21. And then Jupiter is attracted to Io, to the moon. That's F12. And these forces, even though the moon is small and Jupiter is big, these forces are equal and opposite. And the distance that we want to use is from the center of Jupiter to the center of Io, to the center of the moon. And that is the, the distance given here. Um, we're told here that the orbital radius from center, from center to center 
is 422,000 kilometers, which again, <clears throat> we want to put this into meters when we actually solve the problem. All right, so the idea here, so focusing on the moon, focusing on Io, uh, this gravitational force, because F21, the force on the moon from Jupiter, that is a gravitational force. Um, Io is a moon. I mean, I, uh, the moon is a mass. Jupiter is a mass. All masses in the universe attract each other. So when we sum the forces, this is for the moon. We're going to focus on the moon, Io. Uh, when we sum the forces, the only force acting is a gravitational force. This force right here is a gravitational force of attraction. And the sum of the forces always equals ma. Um, oh, I want to mention, the, whenever an object's in a circular path, the center of the circle, so the center of the circle's down here, we always make that positive. So therefore, this force on the moon is, is positive because it points directly to the center. All right, this acceleration, so we, we, sum, we summed the forces on the moon. This acceleration is a centripetal acceleration. And the reason I know that is because the moon is in a circular path. Oh, and I should mention planetary motion is actually elliptical, but we just approximate this and call it uh, a circle. You know, an ellipse is just a, a smushed circle. So now we plug in our equations. The, gra the, the equation for gravitational force is G M1 M2 over R squared. That's the force between Jupiter and the moon. Um, this mass right here, since we're focusing on the moon, this is M2. So this is M2, and then centripetal acceleration is V squared over R. Okay, so cleaning this up, uh, M2 cancels, and one of the R's cancels. So we can get rid of this squared right here. So what this leaves us with is V squared equals G mass of Jupiter over R. So then what we do is we square root both sides and we get V equals square root G mass of Jupiter over R. And that velocity, this is the, uh, the velocity of the moon orbiting Jupiter. So 6.673 is the gravitational constant, 10 to the negative 11. And then uh, the mass of Jupiter, 1.97 times 10 to the 27th kilograms. And then the orbital radius, so now we're using uh, this, the 422,000 kilometers. So putting that into meters, we get 4.22 times 10 to the 8th. Wait, is that correct? Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yes times 10 to the 8th meters, and then it's not squared. This R here is not squared. So punching that into your calculator gives a velocity of 17,649.7 meters per second. And that is the answer to number three. So we're using uh, the second application for Newton's law of gravitation. And the second application just recognizes that the gravitational force on a body orbiting another body, um, the gravitational force is the centripetal force. So that's number three. And then the last question, number four, which I'll solve right in here, in this little space here. So the way you do number four, uh, any object in a circular path the velocity will be the circumference divided by the period. Um, you know, and that equation makes sense because the distance around one circle, so there's a circle, the distance around one circle is the circumference, 2 pi r, and then capital T is the period, which is the corresponding time for one circle. You know, so we're saying the distance of one, the distance around one circle divided by the time for one circle. Period is the time for one orbit. All right, so rearranging this, we get period equals 2 pi r over v. 
and we now have v. So this is 2 pi, the radius of the orbit is 4.22 times 10 to the 8th. That was the bell. Okay, and then the velocity is 17,649.7. So this gives a period of 150,229.42 seconds, which you can convert this to hours, well, minutes to hours to days. So there's 60 seconds in a minute. Um, 60 minutes in an hour, and then 24 hours in a day. So when you do that, you get 1.74 days, which is the answer to number four.